Vaughn be hooking it up. Oh, Vaughn, this is Vaughn with 135th Agency. That's Vaughn right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. So this is a nice little, um, it's a nice little studio. The Yo Checka Show live, and I'm Checka C along the side of Cutting It in Atlanta. It's on WeTV. They're a new reality show, and they are working it. Work? Okay? <laughs> yeah. Can we yes. each introduce ourselves? Certainly. Absolutely. What's up, Yo Checka? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Beauty J, and I am the owner of Spoiled Opulence mm. Salon. <laughs> My name is Maya Sly, and I'm the owner of Walk In Weaves. Hello, yo, Chaka. <laughs> I am Washia from the Damn Salon for hair that will cause horny husbands. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm LaKenya Morris, and I'm a stylist at Jadoa Salon. I am Deidre Allen, owner of Jadoa Salon in Midtown, Atlanta. Perfect. All right, cool. So, ladies, um, have any of you ever been on television before this? I did Home Shopping Network. Oh, you've done Home Shopping Network? Yeah, it's about a year. Really? Anybody else? Yeah, I did a show before called um, Monster in Laws. And, oh. yeah, and I was actually the sister monster. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was titled Beauty is a Beast. Yeah. Oh, so, let me ask you this real quick while you have the mic. <laughs> So the ultimate goal is that you are a beauty salon owner. However, you want to be an actress, maybe? No, actually, oh, okay. it just, just you me. know, just I mean, if it happens, okay. definitely. Um, but no, actually, it, I don't know, it just fell in our laps. My sister okay. and I, my sister introduced me to Monster in Laws. And she told, she asked me to do it, and I pretty much didn't want to do it because me and my brother in law really don't get along. Oh, um, yeah, and then the network who filmed uh, Monster in Laws actually is the one who filmed Cutting It in ATL. Okay. So, Left Field Pictures, shouts out to Left, left Field, Field Pictures. Pictures. That's right. Yeah, okay. but you know, if acting roles come, of course, I'll take that check. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes, but the show "Cutting It in the ATL" is about four salon owners and a, an aspiring salon owner as well, and um, it just shows the whole behind the scene of what we do on an everyday timing you know of life in the yeah. beauty industry because a lot of people don't know what we do and what we go through and the moods and everything else I feel like when we walk into the salon all they see is smiles right you know they don't know what we've been through outside of life but is you know, it true that much. when you go into a salon like whatever the stylist is doing on your hair like that energy is like oh absolutely going into your head. well energy, energy right in because i yes. feel like sometimes when i get my hair done i walk out with a headache and i'm like why is my hair well, because, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah because she's gonna be doing your hair yeah right. energy right. is real energy is real and that's what people do not understand energy is real like if you come in with a sourpuss attitude or everything is woe is me that changes the entire mood of the salon right. and if people can't separate my in my business my philosophy is you leave everything at the door when you walk in here we are kumbaya we're every girl's girl everybody better get along or act like you get along because you're going to spend more time with those people than you do with your family yeah. so why not make your work environment a place that, that you can enjoy family. you know that is your family <laughs> they home. they know more about you than your family That's knows crazy. about you because you're more transparent with them and at the same token if your clients are having a bad day yeah. They can make you have a bad day. So That's you have to be able to, you too, have to yeah. learn how to control yourself right. because you can't control other people. Because you guys are borderline like no, therapists. Therapist. Yeah. yeah. Therapist. Not borderline. Therapist. You are we therapists. Are therapists. <laughs> You're a therapist. And I agree with what all these girls say. Energy is so, 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 so important. I'm very, very keen on energy. Yeah. And like, a lot of women, when they go do their hair, they come, they're really in a bad mood. They just want to come, sit on the chair, hurry up and do my hair, you know? Yeah. But if they come there and the place they walk into has a good energy, all the women say hello, they make sure that you're okay, it changes you. So you don't just get to do your hair done. You don't, 
what the hell did I just say? You don't just get to get your hair done, but you also are inspired and you feel good. And when you leave there, you feel like you've had more than just a hair makeover. Yeah. You've had like a heart and a mind makeover. And That's that to me is everything. Crazy. Let me say one more thing. So in the show, <laughs> speaking of energy, <laughs> just like you said, bad energy needs to stay where? At the door. And you guys will see there is a, an episode where I was about energy so hard really? and I had to take out bad energy for the rest of my day to carry on. I saw the trailer. Oh, you and, did. Um, and I saw some friction going on and I'm saying, thinking to myself, the hair industry is such a, it's a billion dollar industry. So why is there not room for everyone? You know what I mean? Oh, like there's why is there's there actually friction? room for everyone. Okay. It's just up to you to take it. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's up to you to take it okay. and to be it and to make sure that you stay in it by, uh, by, by, by being a great hairstylist and a, being a great owner and a business person. And a lot of people don't understand that doing hair is not just doing hair. It is a business. So is it bad for the owner to still, behind, still be doing hair behind the chair? No, or is it? Know. It's no, not no, bad no, for the owner. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I'll, I'll say this because I'm not a working stylist any longer. Okay. So I was a, I'm a licensed stylist. I've been a stylist. I was a working stylist for over 13 years. Oh. But I haven't been a working stylist for a long time because my other businesses took me away from it. Right. But now it just allows me to do it in a different way because right. there's no way I could service the number of people by myself. So right. I'm allowing other people an opportunity but if you're a working owner you're a working owner because one that's your passion you love what you do if I still had the time I would still do hair because I enjoyed it it was mm -hmm. it was something that really was therapeutic for me right. because I've been doing it for so long I've been doing it since I was a child okay. but as an owner that's like having someone if you owned a label just because you do it I'm still not competition for m the rest of my staff because you can't do it like I do it Mm. <laughs> you do it. You do it. They're coming to me for a certain reason. They're yeah. not going to come to. I, it was difficult for me to transition my clients to other staff because they were like, "I don't want them touching my head." I, and you have to teach your clients that there's more than one way to do it. Just mm -hmm. because I used to do this braid pattern doesn't mean that's the only way that mm -hmm. it can be done. But if you're a working owner, you're a working owner because that's your passion. You love to do hair. You right. enjoy doing hair, and it's also the way that you make a living. Right. So what's the best way to keep a client? Customer service. Customer service. Customer service. Customer service. Really? Customer so business. even if you cut my hair wrong and dyed it You'll wrong, still come back. I would you still will come back. still come back. come back. If you can say sorry to a client, I apologize greatly. And also, you do something back for whatever mess up you did. Like, a lot of people think that $100 is worth that $100. That $100, sometimes you have to give it back. And it could be a worth a hell of a lot more because they see that it's not just about the money. the money. It's about making you happy. And a lot of people don't have that. They would rather lose a client and <laughs> keep that measly hundred dollars right. than to say, take this hundred dollars back, yeah. take this body butter. I'm going to do your hair for free. And then you're going to tell all your friends, you're going to come back and over a year, it's going to be worth $10,000. Well, I love that philosophy because you're actually just philosopher. saying, <laughs> I believe in myself and I'm that's investing really in myself and I'm not worried about this little hundred dollars and that's I'm right. gonna get it back tenfold. and that's what's hard that's what's hard about this industry is that people think that this one client is the last client they're ever going to do and they're mm. backbiting and they're always fighting over customers and for me I think that my business is going to show them on television that there's so many clients out there that you couldn't do them all if you tried yeah. so if we mess up because human error is there you yeah. can color can be wrong the mix could be wrong right. anything could go wrong with hair have you ever had your bangs cut this short it's yeah. like what will I've I do about these myself. bangs uh. yeah exactly but if someone else <laughs> does it and they don't seem apologetic they want to yeah. make it seem like it's your fault and then they want you to pay for it that's unacceptable yeah, and it's unacceptable yeah, yeah. for so many reasons but for people to not think that there's enough room for them, I think this show will definitely show them there's room for everybody out there. And now, I, talking about like promoting your business and advertising it and getting it out there, um, you, I know you have like advertisements all over the city, and, and that's I'm, how and, I and know I'm, of and, and like, the walking <laughs> weed girl. Like, I know that because I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, we see those advertisements all over the city. Right. Do you think that's the best way to um, advertise your business? You know, it depends on your business. Some mediums don't translate for hair at all. Okay. Like, radio commercials don't translate for us. It's right. like, okay, what is that? You know, ding, a jingle. You know, no one knows what that. So I'm a, I have a business background. My degree is in finance, but marketing was a specialty for me. Yeah. And so people have to look, feel, touch. 
and they have to see it and they have to see it repeatedly. So, you know, for working stylists and owners who want to grow their business and they think, oh, I do something for 30 days and it's going to work. No, you have to make an investment and a commitment and it's a sacrifice. Yeah. I mean, my marketing budget is a hundred thousand dollars a year. Like I could keep that money because believe you me, I can do a lot with it, with but money. I have to reinvest in my business for the growth of my business. It's a sacrifice. And there are some months that I don't have to do anything because I laid the groundwork in January, February, March. So May through April through September, we're good. Yeah. Because if you see the same billboard over and over again, you don't recognize it anymore. That's be right. It just so becomes a normal thing. It becomes thing, a normal right? thing. So you have to yeah. kind of learn what the buying behaviors are of people, what times of year they're going to spend the most money. And you have to, when other people aren't spending, you mm -hmm. have to spend double. Right. So that's okay. for me, branding my business through um, buses and billboards and things like that. That was great for my business model right. because I'm a discounted weaving salon and people had to see it to recognize what it is and see it over and over again to just even want to try it because we are so new to the industry. And you, you're up against so many people. Like, I'm up against it's 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 it's, 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 it's tough out here you're in these up streets. These women right here too. <laughs> exactly, and people don't reckon They think, oh, it's fifty dollars. That can't be good. And so you have to show them this is what you can look like for a price. Okay. We start at fifty dollars. Every service package is at fifty dollars. But I'm in business so that women who wouldn't normally be able to afford to get their hair done can now be oh, able to do okay. that. So we could find cost efficient weave. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And now, I for us, actually, actually hold on one second. Actually knew hold that I was one in second. competition with any of these women until this show started because my business and the salon I came from, we just wasn't in competition with other salons. Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's only like we only existed. Right. So my clientele. And you didn't really pay attention yeah, to the I competitor. Really I'm kind of like, like my business is the only business that exists. Right. Until I started this show, then I really began to see, wow, there are other businesses out there. Wow. What I was going to say is what set us apart at our salon um, is the unique style that we came up with, you know, and just the idea that we were doing natural hair when no one was doing natural hair. A lot of people are afraid to do and wear their own natural hair. Or Ooh, is that your natural hair? It's a <laughs> <laughs> so our thing is um, natural no hair or no, I'm going to comment <laughs> okay. natural hair or hair that looks like um, your own natural, natural hair. So this is a protective okay. style, okay. but it still represents the kinky, curly, natural of the a black woman. Exactly. Right. And okay. that a lot of people in this um, society, in today's society, believe that the only way you can look pretty is with straight hair. So our whole thing is that we have shown women that you can still be beautiful in that kinky, curly hair texture. Yeah, I love that. Look. And so thank you. So and so a lot of people have come from all over, you know, the the world, out of state and so forth to come to us, you know. So okay. that's the exciting part. Hold on just one moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for my salon, um, you know, my main thing is everything beauty. Yeah. Like, I want you to walk in as a stranger, but when you walk out, of course, you'll be our friend. You know, you can say whatever. You want to talk about your husband. You want to talk about your best friend. You want to talk about what's going on this weekend. That's my salon. It's like, you know, you let your hair down. You know, if you want to come in dressed up, you can. But if you still want to be very relaxed, you can do that as well. And you're going to walk out looking like a million bucks very opulent and that's the reason why I named my salon spoiled opulence we spoil women inside and out and we make them feel very opulent and um, I do all types of extensions I do sew-ins I do micro links I do fusion um, clip-ins whatever type of protective what would you styling put in my hair? like for you because of keep it real. no I'll keep it real and that's that's <laughs> one That's thing that I will do. do. <laughs> yeah. Well, for you, I definitely wouldn't give you a sew-in because your hair seems very fine. Yeah. So what I would do is I probably would give you clip-ins. Therefore, you can take it out every night if you like or leave it for maybe one or, or two days. Or occasions or something Yeah, or like occasions. Yeah. Or I would give you some small mic micro-links as well. What's micro-links? Micro-links is a small beaded um, tool that we add to the hair and then add the extensions onto it as wow. well. Janet Jackson used to wear fusions long time ago and no one knew what it was. Because Remember? So is that kind of like an old school style? Yeah, oh, but, yeah. it, but, it, but it's, mm. it was one that before was so expensive yes. people couldn't afford yes. to do it. It yes. really reserved for the rich and famous. Exactly. Okay. If you have hair like yours, you can move it back and forth you and can you move can't it. see anything. You can't see, see it. Okay. It's definitely mm -hmm. seamless. Yeah. So um, at our salon, we do all types of extensions. 
extensions. I'm sure at Maya Salon as well. But she specializes. Let me stop talking for my <laughs> talk for myself. <laughs> See, because we love each other. Yeah, but when you ask about what's the best, I mean, it really is what's the best for that person. Exactly. You yeah. know, it's not. It's, there's there's okay. no one. Yeah. You know what is it? One size fits all for anybody. Right. Different hair textures require different install methods. That makes sense. Different and hair textures require different hair, hair textures. Yeah. You know, some people can wear a thicker, coarser hair because it will blend in better with their hair. Others, it would it would look like a Bad. wig on top of your okay. head. You know, some people can wear a closure and it look beautiful on them, yes. and some, they look crazy. So you have to be able to know what's going to be best for that particular client. And as a salon owner, because we have a complaint box, we have, you know, we have refund procedures and policies in place. If you ask for something, we're going to give you that. But we, I always teach my stylist that you have to consult the client because sometimes they'll ask for something and don't even know what they're asking for. Mm, they'll say, oh, I want a closure. Right. Like, are you and then, sure you yeah, want that? And then you're, you right. give it to them it and they're is. like, this, yeah. I didn't want this to look like this. And you're exactly. like, well, that's what you asked for. Right. Oh, I didn't know that's what that was. Really? And I think that's what makes the difference between like successful salon owners right. and other stylists because a lot of people will just do whatever the client yeah. wants. Yeah. You, you, you gotta you take control. Have the control. Yes, you have You're the professional. Exactly. Yeah. You don't go and tell a doctor, here, cut me this way over here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Pull me apart here. You're right. Very and then true. Take out my baby. Right. You get it? Yeah. yeah. And you have to and you have to, as an owner and as mm -hmm. a stylist, be willing to let all money isn't good money. That's the way that I, yeah. I tell my st staff all the time, if I'm okay with them walking out the door, you need to as well. Because because some people will come in and they want the world for a price point that is not in our packages. And we are an a la carte salon. So for that reason, we're going to give you whatever you want, but it comes at a price. So if you're going to tell me that you want all of these things and that's not in our package, we have a price point for right. that. But we're only going to do what you pay for as well. Gotcha. So, you know, that's something that the consumer has to understand. And that's something that working stylists have to understand that sometimes you have to be willing to let some people walk away. And then you can send them right over the spot. I'll send them, <laughs> send them right over the spot. I'll send them right over the spot. We'll take care of it. We can all make money yeah. together. They're on the corner. They'll do it. Let's talk about self-care. Mm -hmm. Like, you ladies are just giving all the time, making women feel beautiful all yes. the time. What about self-care? Like, are you putting as much effort into your... Our show is about heart, health, and pocketbook. Mm -hmm. So are you putting that much effort into your health, into your body, into who you are, your mind, your you soul? Have, you well, I believe that's like the ultimate goal is to be total body, full body, just all around healthy. It does get rough at times, but working out, eating right, I mean, it starts from the inside. Yeah, so absolutely. That's, that's where so you begins. work out? Um, <laughs> well, we're getting back into that, um, okay. that arena. <laughs> okay. one, one of the things that we stress Mikey, yeah. Mikey. yo Chucka <laughs> one of the main things that we do at our salon is we promote health all the time um, so like with our staff quarterly we do different types of fun things so our last our last little fun thingy that we did was a weight loss challenge pretty ah, much but it was cool. like since your waist whoever since their waist the smallest um, in body fat, they right. won three thousand wow. dollars. So everybody put money in a pot, and then Spore Opulence doubled it and matched it. So, you know, that's cool. I'm, I'm big. I work out. Yeah, I work out. Like I box. What do you do? I well, you do look really fit. Though. I do. Yeah. Well, you know, I just try to stay real toned. You know, yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you. Because yeah. <laughs> when you over thirty, you gotta keep it going. Okay. okay. So um, what I do is I work out on. Um, I want to say on a daily basis, I probably do maybe like two, three days out the week Okay. because um, I'm very, very busy. But my son, he's a basketball player, oh. so I'm very, very active with him, and we work out together, actually. Cool. Yeah, we work out in the gym together because I motivate him. He motivates me. So working out is number one in my salon. We talk about working out all the time. That's cool. Like the gym. We have a gym in our complex. And oh, good. They can use that, you know, use the key and go work out while they have a break. Yeah. So, and eating healthy, too. My clients come in, automatically see me looking fit and trim, so they automatically know that I'm into health and fitness. So I try not to, you know, offer a lot of different unhealthy food choices when they come in. All right. And they all, you know, ask me about how I keep my health care regimen, and I just let them know it's about portion control. Mm. I am 42 years old. I have three children. Wow, you look good. Myself, and I just don't overeat. Um, right. My mother is very heavy. And um, I just find if I just have portion control, I don't have to work out, 
It looked fabulous. I don't mm. do anything. Oh, so you don't work yeah. out? You just you eat right? Cause, well, they do say that it's 90% of what you eat. Right. Yeah. It is 90% of what you eat. Yeah. And, and for... Yeah. Yeah. I think more so for me, mine is about being transparent and mine is all about the mind. Because if yeah. you can control your mind, you can control anything. So anyone that knows me and follows me, I talk about therapy all the time. I think that it's important to always make sure that you are clear about what your goals are and what you want to do. But you need a professional. You need someone that can tell you, you know what, it's okay that you're stressed out. You've got 5,000 things going on. Yeah. You should be stressed out. Absolutely. And not be afraid to ask for so help. you have a therapist. Yeah, I have a therapist. I'm on a couch. I tell people I pay somebody to listen to my problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, pay, I pay someone to listen to my problems. And I'm very open about that I think that's the best gift you can give yourself you I'm divorced oh, okay. so um, in going through a divorce my therapist was better than any exercise anything that I could do I run I work out I'm very active in my life but yeah. me but I'm all about I'm all mend. about the, I'm all about the mental health because yeah. your mental health is every Thing. You will feel like with all that we do and all you have going on, we have so many personalities that we have to deal with every single day. And you know day. that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Oh, really? Oh, oh wonderful. And her birthday. And her, <laughs> and her birthday. It's a month birthday. of beauty. <laughs> but, but it's all about, for me, it's, it's mind, body, and soul. But that's taking right. care of your mind, you can take care of everything. That's and so right. that's really important, I think, for black women in general. You know, it's always a stigma that goes along with yes. it. Oh, I'm not going to take this. Or I'm like, sweetie, there's a pill for that. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> yes. you, better, you better sit down. Listen. You better you better sit down somewhere <laughs> yeah if you're anxious all the time you know you need to talk to you need to figure out why you are the yeah. way that you are and yeah. you need to understand that. I mean that goes to even you know small children when they have they're all over the place and their parents don't want to medicate them I don't want to change their personality some parts about their personality could be changed and it's, it will be okay it will be okay, okay. you know ADD. and when they have ADD and things like that oh, so yeah. it's just like Doesn't that everybody have ADD yeah exactly <laughs> I don't believe in that. and you don't have to believe, believe and it's not for everybody but for, but for me you know more so about your about your mind I'm, I'm all about Absolutely. therapy and talking to someone and making yeah. sure that you you know you're able to really communicate what's going yeah. on with you and understand it so you can understand you need a you need somebody else's you know who has nothing vested in it to be able to really give you a true picture An of what yeah yeah what's sure. going on with you and some things are clinical yeah. like okay it's it's okay for you to feel this way about this yeah. and you'll be okay because of it yep. so that's Absolutely. for me that's the mental part of it and if you get your mind yeah. right you can do everything mm -hmm. Love it. All right, last but not least, we have a fun trivial question that we ask. It's the question of the day. <laughs> 70, okay, so 70% of women say they wish they could do this on a regular basis. What do you think it is? Oh, she said sex and workout. I guess it's like the same thing. Anybody else? Travel. Travel. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Rest. Rest? What do you think it is? You don't know? Just throw something out. I don't know. Just Laugh. keep my son happy. Like seventy percent of know. women oh. say keep your son happy. Know. Yeah. Okay. What's That's the answer? All right. Guess what? what? Guess what, ladies? I'm what? sitting right Shop. next to a bunch of Shop. ladies that do hair, and seventy percent of women say they wish they could get their hair done more often. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh. 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 My name is Beauty J. My name is Maya Fly. My name is Mashia. My name is Virginia. I'm Jesus Allen. And, and we, we are the